Hi, everyone. It's T. Westbrook, and I'm back with a new episode of the Cool Girls Create podcast. And y'all, I'm so hyped because I have a very special creative woman here today, and her name is Mon Ray. And if you don't know her, which I'm sure you do by now, but if you don't, you are in for a treat. So, hey, Mon Ray, how are you? Hello, how are you? I'm doing <laughs> well. I'm doing well. Okay, so let's get started. So, um, Let's tell the people a little bit about who you are and what you do. So let's start there. Who is marketing by Monray? Oh, that is a loaded question. But essentially what my little spiel is, is that I am marketing by Monray. I'm a marketing strategies and business development coach. Um, I ultimately help entrepreneurs be able to create addictive revenue generating launches um, so that they can prioritize community building. Um, our foundation is to connect other people to their tribes, um, but we need to do that by making a whole lot of money too. So um, that is what I help entrepreneurs do by just ultimately just making marketing simple. I think people think marketing is super hard so our job is just to make it as simple as possible I know that's right and and I work in the marketing industry so we we are definitely going to dive deep into that um so my first uh time seeing you was on social media it was kind of like you took social media by storm a few years ago right uh but before then let's get into the Monray before um the the come up so I heard yeah. I read that you started your first business while you were in college back in 2013. So tell me a little bit about that. Like, why did you start it? And especially in college, like what was going on? Yeah, I actually like I talked about in my book that I've always been just wanting to try stuff like um I love to work I think working was just my superpower and when I was 14 I started working um as a assistant for my auntie that had a beauty salon so like I had to sweep the floors and like shampoo and all of that and I just love to work and then when I turned 16 I got a job and started working at Backyard Burger and I was like oh this is good I'm earning my own money and literally with my first check I was like I want a grill so I'm gonna buy me a grill and I was like can't nobody tell me no <laughs> so um just being able to like work and even at 17 I became a manager I moved to McDonald's and became a manager and I was like man I really love to work so when I went to college my mom was like you got to focus on school and I was like this is kind of weird because I'm used to working and doing school but hindsight I was not going to be able to do both initially so when I I was about 19 and I actually, this was 2013, and I got an opportunity to be assistant for a makeup artist. And she was like, you need a, I was like, I need a job. You know what I'm saying? And so um, I didn't know what an assistant did. She didn't either. So I just did what I felt was right. Um, I started to help her grow her Instagram account. This was like around the time Instagram was just now kind of bubbling mm -hmm. a little bit. So we were growing her Instagram account. I was... Um, hosting events for her I called myself doing PR like pitching her to doing like I just was doing whatever I felt like was right um and when I was in that space it just felt very good and so that's kind of where the buzz started to happen I mean so you said so many things so one <laughs> as a as a creative that's that's how it happened for me as well like when I was in college it's I think being in college is the perfect time to just try stuff and I'm yeah, gonna try no. to keep it clean. I'm gonna try to keep it clean with the cuss words, but try stuff, you know, try. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, so it's the perfect time to just try different projects and, and figure out what career you're gonna be in. So, so the first question I had was, what was your major in college? Was it focused on business? Because I know for me, I wanted to go to school for dance and my <laughs> mama was like, no. So I went to school for accounting, right? And now I'm an entrepreneur, but- what yeah. about you? <laughs> Me too. Um, I actually went to school for accounting starting out. Um, so I loved accounting. I was just like, this is because I started taking accounting classes in or well, in high school, and I took all of them, and I was like, okay, I could do this. And I so I seen myself. I actually reposted like a post I made years ago, and I was like, I'm going to be a forensic accountant. I'm going to go work in New York. I'm gonna go be, you know, working for the uh the 
the police station, all of the FBI. I was working for the FBI. So to think now where my life is, that is not where I wanted to start. So I, I did not start. Well, I guess that's business, but like we took a couple marketing classes, as you know, but it wasn't like deep dive. Like mm -mm. they don't teach you anything in school for real. <laughs> no, well, they teach you. Oh, it's tricky. So I went to uh, Tennessee State. So okay. I have a I don't know if you went to a PWI or, you know, a black school. I, I went to a P. I I went to Southern Miss. So, like, I was oh, okay. on the whole other end of the spectrum. Than yeah. <laughs> so, for me, I found who I was at my school. Mm -hmm. So, yep. if anything, it taught me about being proud to be a black woman. Um, and, you know, I did the internships and things like that. But it just helped me push myself out of my little introvert bubble so yeah. but I, I definitely can relate to you know not having the same experience as that but I think I would encourage you if if you don't know exactly what you want to do college is like a great place to figure that out oh for sure I tell you so um my boyfriend has a 17 year old son and I like at first he didn't want to go to school and I was just like you don't gotta like I don't want to be like that person where it's like, you don't got no choice, but college is the perfect place of the balance of you get to be an adult and a child at the same time. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> exactly. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. Like you need that little transition period. You get, you get the food that's there for, you know, you got shelter, you know <laughs> yeah. what I'm saying? A little independence, you yeah, know? Exactly. exactly. But yeah. So, um, so, so you ended up while you were in college, basically laying the foundation for your uh, entrepreneurial journey with branding uh, or brand management, because you were doing all the things. And this is so funny. Like I did, you know, I've been watching you and, um, you know, I, I did research, but I'm like, wow, we have like a very similar way that we approach yeah. entrepreneurship because um, those are all the foundational things that I did as well. All types of events. And, um, you know, when you're first starting out, it's like, I got to figure out how to do this. You know, I'm, I'm just going to jump in and then we'll figure it out on the way. Yeah. But what was the transition moment or transitional moment for you to make you realize like, this is what I want to do? Hmm. I think that moment when I started working with the makeup artists, like when, because I figured out, I wasn't really that good in school. Like I knew I could do it, but it was boring to me. And sometimes it's very hard for me to put my energy towards something I don't want to do. And so um, I know I wanted to do accounting. I knew I understood what was going on. I knew I would be a great accountant, but I just didn't want to go. I didn't feel like why I need to be in psychology classes. I'm never gonna speak Spanish. Like why? Like this, mm -hmm. you know. Like it was just like you're wasting my time, you know. Yeah. And so, when I got to being able to apply these things in business, I was just like, I'm learning things that are applicable to my life. Like this right. makes more sense. And so, um, at that moment, it just stirred something in me, and I was like, oh, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And so from there, that was like, okay, I need to put all of my resources into this, like whatever like energy or what I need to learn should be to make this better and honestly I'm not a I think school is for um and like I said I 100% feel like everybody should go to school but the way that they teach school is more so for the traditional learner the person mm -hmm. that likes to read books and take tests like I'm not that person I'm a creative learner so like just throw me in the office and tell me like, you got to figure out how to make this client save this money. And I was like, oh, I could do that. And so mm -hmm. because I got to experience life like that through my business, like nobody was teaching me to, I didn't have a coach. I didn't know about this coaching. In, like I didn't know about this. So I just would go into my, my client and be like, hey, we want to do an event. And I just would do the event. Like I just yeah. would die and figure it out and mess up and learn from my mistakes. So. Yeah, that you know, that's a good point, though. That's a good point to just reiterate, because as an entrepreneur or, you know, someone who is a high level business owner, you have to have a level of resourcefulness. And so what you were saying is it's it's which is interesting because um, I'm thinking about your TED talk. So the uh, quote that you did about being a jack of all trades with a master of none Um and then you continued on, but as a business owner, you have to be able to just 
just figure it out and say, how am I going to make this thing that I have better? Uh, Mm -hmm. And so I think that's a great point. So you were doing some brand management, right? And you decided to take it seriously. So what was that, what was that period like for you? Because I know for me, um, it took a while. So I worked in corporate America, full-time, you know, financial analyst, the whole corporate life, right? And it and I ended up breaking out into hives, you know, from stress, um, because I was doing full-time and then I had my business on the side. Uh, and so I had to make a decision to take that leap. But for you, you kind of figured that out while you were in college and decided to take it seriously. So what were some of the things like the first steps that you took to start to create a, a business, you know, from mm-hmm. from the passion that you were doing? Yeah. So, you know, that's a good question, because I did in do for a while I didn't do what I did for my clients for myself um I just would like just you know be the person you know what I mean like it took me a moment and honestly even though I said like I was so proud to tell I got a business (laughs) what are you talking about like I have like I was telling people I had a business but I wasn't running it like a business um honestly the thing that stopped me was a lot of it was my money mindset like I wouldn't ask for what I knew I needed to really complete this project. So the first client that was paying me was paying me like a hundred dollars a week. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So it was like, and then I would have to ask her for that money. I'm like, okay, so can't run this business like this. All right. So then I would take another client and it just wouldn't be enough. And so there was this point, I think this was my junior year where I pitched a client and I was like, okay, I'm going to her office. I'm about to pitch her on this campaign and how I can help her hair company. And I'm about to ask her for $1,300 a month. And I was so scared because it was, this is a lot of money at this time to me, Mm -hmm. you know? And so when I asked her and she was like, yes, I was like, child, that's all I had to do is ask. (laughs) Like that is crazy. And so in that moment, what I realized is that you don't get what you deserve. You get what you negotiate. And it's up to you to open your mouth to be able to ask for what you require man and you so the who now you speaking facts right because so it's a few things that I that I pulled from what you just said so the first thing is like building that confidence to be able to verbally say this is my expectation or this is this is the service that you're getting and this is the price, right? So you, you have to build that confidence as a business owner. But the other thing is like, as a creative, and I don't know if you identify with this, a lot of times I just did stuff. I like the same thing. Like I, I'm a business owner, right? But a lot of the, the art stuff, I felt like it wasn't as valuable. So mm-hmm. when people, when it was time to say, you know, I'm doing all this work, and you know a hundred dollars or you want me to do this full campaign for you for 150 dollars and i gotta i gotta buy the props i gotta get the models i gotta (laughs) shoot it and edit it (laughs) you know what i'm saying so but as a creative um what was it that you told yourself to say uh you know my art is worth something like this because a lot of times well when i was coming up being a creative was not something that other people saw as a legitimate career or um you know they would think oh you're just gonna take these photos for me and it's it's not a value so was there anything you know in your journey during that time that made you stand up (laughs) yeah my bills um (laughs) I was like I can't do both so at the time I was used to working so my business was consistent in a sense, but I also had to go get a job. So I went to get a job to start paying my bills. And I was like, well, this job, and it wasn't, you know, I worked at um, Dairy Queen as a manager, but it was like, this job is taken away from the time I could spend on my client stuff. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, it, you got to be able to take over these bills so that I can be able to focus. And so I had to make the decision that I want, I have to speak up for myself. And then I also have to set the same way I set goals for my clients and the same way I market my clients, I have to market 
me. And I really, it took me honestly a while to get to that point, to the point fast forward all the way to Atlanta for me to get to that point. But I started to just, cause I, it, I couldn't see like how I was going to tangibly make this money. Right. Mm -hmm. Like I had this client that told me they was going to pay me $1,300. I think they did it for like one or two months and then she fell off. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, well, maybe that was too much. Maybe like I did the wrong thing, you know? And so I actually started creating e-commerce. I created the e-commerce brand. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was like, well, at least if you can get these shades, then you could pay me the $10, you know what I'm saying? And so, but it was just a money mindset thing that I didn't realize that what I had, my my tangible skill was my brain. Ooh. And a lot of people don't, you don't understand that, you know? And it took, it honestly took my, uh, my boyfriend to tell me that. Like he saw that in me because I always wanted a tangible skill. I, oh, I need to learn how to do hair or, oh, I need to learn. Like I need somebody to be able to walk away with this. And you see that this was a value, but I needed, I realized when he would tell me that he was like, man, nobody can, at first he couldn't describe it, but he was like, man, nobody can Google like you. Nobody can find what you can find. Nobody can, like, he was like, your brain, your business brain is just different. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I was like, man, I need to sell my mind and not my skills. Oh my gosh. So, okay. So girl, cause <laughs> what I'm thinking about is conversations that I've had with my uh, mentors. And that was, it's, it's a, that's a whole other lesson about having people in your life that, um, uh, that feed you in that way right so what you're des describing right now is the gift of being a visionary right and that and I identify as that as well and 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 I find that a lot of creative women specifically black women that I know that have that skill set it's very difficult to uh monetize it because we don't look at it as I guess I'll be candid as something that is you know valuable. valuable so and and I want to I want to you know talk about that because being able to take something that is in your mind and then make it real life with whatever you have you know as far as resources is a real gift but why do you think as visionaries we struggle with that like struggle with turning it into a business itself for me it was because it was easy and so I thought everybody could do it. And I actually would get frustrated when people could. I'm like, you don't know just how to Google this thing and research and find a manufacturer. Exactly. You know, like, it, this is not hard. You know what I mean? Or you don't think in systems. You don't think. And so what I realized now, I'm a little bit older, but what I realized is that it was just in a gift that God gave me. Like I like how we have spiritual gifts. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like it's just innately a gift that God gave me. And I can't expect you to have my same gift or this person to have my same gift because I don't have their same gift. Right. Mm -hmm. And so some of us have like-minded gifts or gifts that are similar, but all of us were uniquely created. So we the gifts that we normally have, we don't feel like are we don't treat them as gifts, right? Like we don't treat them as prized possessions. We don't treat them as like we should, it should, it's the top of the top. It's upper echelon. This is what God gave us to be able mm -hmm. to fulfill our purpose. We don't treat them as that. We treat them as like, it's, it's something on the street. Like we treat them yeah. like, oh, you like know, I just want to create systems and create SOPs and project planning. And like I, no, it's like, that is your gift. That is the way to unlock your destiny. That is the way to unlock, like, it's literally the steps and we don't treat it like that. Do you think that it's um, a cultural thing? I think, I, I mean, I think that I was also never taught um, to identify my gifts. I feel like... you Were, were you taught to, like, kind of, like, dim a little bit or... <laughs> fairly dim but we just didn't talk about it right like mm -hmm. it wasn't something like my mom was like let's you're really good at that um do, 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 do. you know what i mean you're really good at the xyz you really have a hard work ethic what's that you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so i feel like as future parents or parents like we have to develop kids gives young um and i remember um eric my boyfriend telling me that like his son had um a gift for like he had an aptitude for speaking multiple languages mm. and he but 
he had no money he was broke so what 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 the hell i'm gonna do with that you know what i'm saying so i can't i can't help him speak all of these language portuguese all i speak it i can't pay for him to speak it so i think that one we have to have the resources to to develop these gifts but also two we have to talk to people about their gifts and i don't want to just limit it to children i think there are some people and some women that I literally run across every day that's in corporate that's using their gift they just don't know is there and they don't know that that's their their thing right and see that's the space that i that i'm in is like really helping cultivate people and help them figure out you know what is it that god gave you that that comes naturally to you that you're just overlooking because it's a journey that i'm still going through yeah. um the other thing that you mentioned uh, was mindset so uh you've talked about you know having a specific you mentioned you said money mindset uh but I would like it to take it a step further and just let's just umbrella statement and say mindset in general when it comes to being a creative or a creative entrepreneur because there's levels to it right so um let I want to get into this when it when it comes to business so you have you know people talk about abundance mindset and um or you know a lack lacking mindset but what was was there pivotal moments in your entrepreneurial journey where you had to have some major shifts in your mindset um yeah because I know I I had I've had plenty (laughs) I would say there was several like I always say that God has taken me through an evolution probably every year, like something changes. And so that means I have to change, which is, it's scary because it's like, you don't, I'm like, man, I'm tired of changing. I don't want to be better. You know what I'm saying? I, I like, I would like to stay where I'm at for a little while, but, um, my mindset had to go from one first being able to believe that my gifts were deserved to be monetized. Then I had to, by the time I developed the business and then by the time I left school, I was now at the quote unquote, in my friend's eyes, the top of the food chain, right? Like I was, Mm -hmm. I had made it according to them. I had started several businesses. I was working with clients, people, I was in a small city. So people knew me in the city, you know, so where were you? I was in Hattiesburg, Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Okay. Mississippi. Cause you said Southern. Okay, cool. So it's like. In their minds, it's like, oh, I made it. You know, like, she going to do good. She about to be, she going to kill it. So then I had to develop my mindset from being like, oh, okay, like, I'm that girl to now coming to a city like Atlanta, like, nobody knows me. <laughs> like, I got to do some work. Yeah. And, so, <laughs> so you yeah. went from big fish in a small pond to little fish in the ocean. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly, exactly. And I was like, okay. And now I have to redevelop because I developed my confidence in that area. But now I need to redevelop my confidence against some people that frankly just might be better than me. You know, like I just, I never really had competition Mm -hmm. in Hattiesburg. Like it wasn't like another brand management. Like nobody was starting businesses in college, but now I'm in a city of hustlers, you know what I mean? And so um, I had to figure out how to like rise to the top, but I honestly just kept going back to my same mindset of like, can't nobody outwork you. Can't nobody outwork you. Just work hard. You know, going back to that same 14 year old mindset. And so then I was like, okay, now I need to develop. Well, this is a business because now I would same thing. Like, even though I knew I needed to monetize it, now I need to bring on talent. Now I need to bring on people. So even though it was enough for me, for you to give me a thousand dollars a month, for me to pay my payroll, for me to pay for this office, for me to pay for all of these things, now I need to develop the mindset of a CEO, you know? And so, and those were all different things. And once I got the talent, now I need to become personally better because I'm an only child. So I don't oh, care. you're an only child, girl? Yes. Ooh. So... I have I have a sister and brother like on my daddy's side, but like I grew up by myself. So now I got an office full of employees telling me about their emotions and their feelings, and I feel like you said that. I'm like, what what's your I- sign? I'm a Taurus. Oh, oh, I actually love Taurus. I'm a Cancer. 
yeah so me and Taurus is actually get along I feel like y'all are very like in your face as far as personality but you're uh, like you're whatever whoever you are this is exactly what you're gonna get and for the most part y'all have like very even killed temperaments it's like yeah I, I I like Taurus okay so yeah. I can understand your sentiment about like now you hiring people you like why y'all all of y'all feelings and I'm over yeah, here like, I'm a cancer I'm like oh my gosh are you okay today <laughs> <laughs> no I, that was I got a dial all the way back I got a dial it back yeah. um so so in your journey you went from uh being in college you know for accounting did you is that what you ended up uh graduating with no girl I ended up so my junior year I actually failed my last well I made a D so you know you got to make a C or above so I made a D and I was like well I'm doing this business so this don't matter so change this degree to business and let's see out so okay so so uh, your general business degree and mm -hmm. then you started on taking you started taking on clients um and then so when did you move from Mississippi to Atlanta when like was that while you were figuring out the entrepreneurial thing? It was literally two weeks after I graduated. So two weeks after I graduated, I had I moved out of my apartment. I put everything in my car. I put it in my boyfriend's house. And then we drove to Atlanta like a week or two later. And then I got there and I didn't, I realized that I didn't have an apartment. Like they told me I had one, but they was like, no, I found out like my roommate had got us evicted and I didn't know about it all like almost oh evicted. So um because I was always in my boyfriend's house, I didn't know what was going on, you know. So um, anyways, I had to go to Atlanta. I'm here now, my stuff is in the car and I don't got no apartment, so I had to figure it out. So what was the figuring out? You 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 figured it out, got your your foot in the door as far as being in Atlanta and starting to build this brand so let's so let's fast forward right to you you did your figuring out in Atlanta now let's fast forward to when you came back when you came on the scene when I saw you <laughs> so you were um doing your thing as an entrepreneur in Atlanta you you just kind of figured out how to I'm assuming get clients um and start to build your business um, so let's talk about your strategy for building that business. And so I was saying that, like, when I saw you coming on the scene, I imagined that you were in the process of maybe scaling or really focusing on increasing your reach overall. Um, but let's talk about that. Where, how was the journey for you to go from Atlanta, working with clients to this big splash with all the creative campaigns on social media and going essentially into coaching. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, that was a crazy transition. So when I came to Atlanta up until, so I came to Atlanta in 2017 and I didn't make the transition to coaching until the last month of 2019. So from 2017 to 2019, I had been doing agency work. Um, but at, in 2019, I had partnered with Ming to do a, um, for people that don't know, Ming Lee is a, she owns a brand called Snob Life. And so we partnered to do a creative agency where we were only doing like content and campaigns um, for people. But like, I was super excited about it. I had brought my team over to the business. I'm talking about my furniture, everything. I moved out of my office. We moved into one office. And then four months later, it closed. And I'm like, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Like this is not okay, Lord. I we talked about this. This is not what you said. Can we can we spend a little bit of time right there on the closing? Because a lot of people talk about the success of being an entrepreneur, but there are a lot of failures, closings, drop offs, yeah. um, and so. Um, and especially with partnerships. So I actually opened, I'm based in Nashville, um, but I opened a one-stop shop kind of studio a while back and earlier in my entrepreneurial journey. And it was a partnership. So mm -hmm. it was hair, makeup, wardrobe, and content, right? But the partnership didn't work out and we ended up closing after a year. Um, but I'm curious to know, like, what was the climate for the closing? And if there was anything that you learned in that moment, what was it? 
Um, yeah. So I learned a lot through because I've never partnered with anybody. Like it's always been on my own merit. And with the development of the partnership, it was I was excited because I was like, this is my like I had built so many seven figure businesses for other people. I was like, this is my time to build my seven figure business with this partnership. And so I'm I went into the mindset. That's why I went in like 10 toes in, like you can, I'm bringing my team, I'm bringing my resources, like we finna do this. And so, but what I realized is that, and I'm still, I still was at the point where I didn't realize how much personal life collided with your business sometimes, right? Mm-hmm. And so um, Ming was actually going through something. She had just had a baby. She was going through postpartum. She had a lot of stuff going on, but also we just run business differently. You know what I'm saying? I'm a creative, but I'm also very strategic. I'm also very documented. I'm also very orderly. Me not like that. Like she like creative today is the sky is blue. And I was just mm-hmm. like, what you mean? No, yesterday we said, yeah, you know, yeah. like, so <laughs> I didn't realize that we needed to have a partner mix. You know, we needed to um, understand like, okay, you're going to do this. I'm going to do this. Right. Like I was just like, I'm gonna do all of this. And then I'll let you know when I need you to do something. Oh, and wow. it's not a, a partnership works you know and so by the end of it it was just like okay this is closing because we're not profitable like we were making money but it's not at the end of the day it's not profitable enough for me to take home enough money and you to take home enough money for it to make sense and I needed to make money I had started you know I got a house like I thought I had bills you know so um and at that point it was frustrating because I'm like dang I done brought my whole team over here and now I need them to make a decision you know like which way are you trying to go and I just didn't want to put them in a place to make the decision because I was like I think it was also fear that you wasn't gonna decide choose me because if you know the situation you know like me already got a seven figure business you know what I'm saying so you already know like this business has notoriety we still on the come up I I'm not marketing by Monray you know so um yeah so I just left the team I left the equipment I left everything there and I went home and once again I figured it out <laughs> went back to the drawing board baby because yes. that's what we do <laughs> yes. every yeah. every time every single time yeah and 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 I want I just want to like reiterate some key points in what you're saying because again people glamorize entrepreneurship but when it comes to well there are a few things so with partnerships I get a lot of negative I I feel like people are negative when it comes to partnerships and collaborations, meaning either you've been burned or you just feel like you can do everything on your own. And those two ways of thinking, I feel like hinders or hinders us a lot as entrepreneurs. So um, I think it's important, like you said, to figure out, you know, who you're working with, you have to have the same styles when it comes to running a business, but also personalities and vibes. And um, being a being in a partnership is almost like, I mean, it's almost like being married or having a boyfriend or a family, you know what I'm saying? So you got you got to get the chemistry right. Um, And know when if if one person is going through something, you got to pick up here. But if you know, um, If this person is doing this, then, you know, you got to pick up slack over here. Um, And then the other thing that you mentioned that I thought was interesting was going back to the drawing board. So a lot of times we see the success, right? And we don't know that behind the scenes, you know, I had to start over or I was listening to your TED talk. and You was like, I got this inventory and it's looking at me and I'm looking at it. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) So same thing. So, you know, I, I've, I've done events, open studios, had inventory. So all of those things, I want people to know that, um, just because you fail and I'm doing air quotes at something doesn't mean that that's the end of the road. You know what I'm saying? Yes. No, you I always feel like your failure is setting you up for your next success um I was watching an interview from um Mike Todd and he says he always measures his success not by success to success but storm to storm because I know in the middle of the storm there's going to be success right and a lot of times we don't think about like and if I think about like 
just the way that God works because anything that you ask for, he tests you on. You know what I mean? So the moment that you like, God, I'm ready for abundance. I'm ready for more money. He's like, okay, let me test your finances. Let me see if you really want it. You like now, I ain't mean like that, you know? So I think like that storm to storm, you know, like, you are on the way to something, some breakthrough that's about to happen. Um, and so I think a lot of people just feel like, and I felt like that at the time. Like, I'm not even going to lie and say, I was like, oh, this is going to be great. Like, I was like, man, what am I going to do? And not to me, like, I went back to doing, I was like, okay, let me just get clients. He was like, girl, I didn't break you up from that situation to go back to the same thing. I told you not to do the first thing. You know, like, it wasn't working. I was trying to get mm -hmm. clients and the clients that I would get that would get on my nerves and it was just like, it's not working. So I really had to have a come to Jesus meeting and be like, now, Lord, what do you want me to do? And so he was like, go back and go back and do what I told you to do the first time, which was to teach. Like he had been telling me, and it's the crazy thing when I look back on it, me, the day before we launched the agency, we were sitting on her couch and she was like, we should just, what if we just do some like online stuff? And I looked at her like, help, 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 show me. like, girl, I done brought all these people. Like we were launching the next day, like going live, telling people, I don't brought my team over here. We done set everything up. Like the project is done. You know, what do you mean? You know, so, but God kept planting these seeds because we did launch something online and it was doing well, but it wasn't what I was used to. But it was because I took God out of it. Like he wasn't leading it anymore. Ooh. And so he told me to go back to do what I told you. And that is how I got to this marketing by Monray that you guys know today. Yes. Okay. So before we get into the marketing Monray, because this is this is where all the tea is, you know, when we get to the, we start talking about the marketing and business, but so I'm being a true cancer here, y'all. Cause as soon as she said, go back, do start doing what I told you. I got, I felt, a, I just felt the emotion because I feel like in my journey, um, that's something that I've really had to work through. And it's just a blessing to do this podcast and have these conversations because a lot of times, honestly, you feel like you're in it alone. Mm -hmm. And um, what you were saying about, you know, you talk about Ming said, she like, we should do this online thing. You like, what? But to to be honest, God gives you signs all the time. And, and what happens is we start being in our own heads and start overthinking and what if this and moving away from the path that he had already laid out for us and that that's really what stood out to me about what you said because a lot of times God is telling you this is your gift this is where all of the abundance is going to happen you know and and I find that with women that are in this space when it comes to teaching or coaching we don't want to accept that title. So mm -hmm. I know for me, I struggle with like, well, who am I to coach other people about marketing or business? Who am I to call myself, you know, a teacher or a coach? But that's something that God put in you. You know what I'm saying? Um, all right. So let's get to marketing by Monray. So you splashed on the scene, right? And to me, to me, I was like, who is this girl with these uh, relatable campaigns, right? So let's talk about that. So you decided, I mean, you went back to Mississippi, went back to the drawing board, and then Marketing Monray was born. So oh, I didn't go back to Mississippi. I still was in Atlanta. Oh, you went back to, oh, you said, <laughs> she said, no, I, I didn't go back. The drawing board, but I, I didn't go back. <laughs> Ooh, that see that's another thing we will we do not like going back home baby we oh no i was home. not doing it yeah uh -huh. i left no, Memphis. Man, how long it's been i i think i oh i moved away from home in 2008 baby i said uh-uh <laughs> so, so you went back to the drawing board um, so what tell me about this part of your journey what were the steps that you took to to basically rebuild 
Yeah, so at this point, now I'm like, all right, now I got to do this teacher thing because it's what the Lord is telling me to do. And so um, I had, I've been, I was already doing like webinars and trainings, but I was doing it for fun. Like I hadn't really put energy behind it, but people was really, they loved it. Like they were like, this is really helping me. And so I literally still have students from 2019 that still work with me in my highest level program. And so I just started to put things together. I was like, okay, what do people need? Like, what, what is it that you guys need? And so I started creating resources and bundles and classes and eBooks that was going to serve a purpose. But, and so that is how 2020 kind of went. Like, I made these ebooks and I got, I found the uh, gift of launching. Um, and that's what we teach today. But I found the gift of launching because I realized that a lot of times people want people to buy stuff from them, but they just drop it. It's like a silent, like it's silent. Like it's they like, Beyonce. Yeah, like here you go. Like you have no audience. You told nobody was coming. Nobody's excited about it. And so that was what I was showing with the campaigns. Like, oh, I need to get people excited about that this launch is coming. I need to get people excited about that this development is about to happen. Whatever it is, I don't care if it was an ebook or if it was a class. Like we about to launch this thing. And so we were launching at least twice a month with new products and services. So let so let's talk about that because um a lot of entrepreneurs struggle with launching and based on my experience so I've worked with um close to 5000 entrepreneurs now in the last 5 years right and specifically black entrepreneurs so a lot of times I find that they don't understand the basic principles of marketing or the basic principles of like you were saying you just drop in products but you and you're expecting, you know, somebody to just show up out of nowhere. So what were some of the ways that you went about launching? You know, if if you were talking to, you know, an aspiring entrepreneur or a creative and they were dropping the ebooks or the classes or the products, what were what are some ways that would help them, you know, start to take those steps and do it, do it well? Yeah, so one way that we launch um, and I teach people to launch is that we have a disruptive method. Like you don't need to just show up on the internet. You need to disrupt the internet, right? So the fact that you even remember our campaigns was the point, right? Like I needed that to be embedded in your mind for you to be like, I don't care what's going Like I need to be in the top conversation when you think about coaches, right? Because of the campaigns. And so what I tell people is first, you have to have a creative concept because as much knowledge as you know, as much as good as you are and what you are doing, that if you don't have a hook for people to be like tied in and for me to stop scrolling and see what you got going on, then I'm not going to stop to see that you are good at what you're supposed to be doing. Right. And so, so wait, have- pause, pause. So let's okay. break it down for the people in the back who don't know what a hook is. Okay. So, so when I say hook, I mean, in a sense of, and of course we know like it could come in the form of content, but I mean like our hook was our creative concepts where we had campaigns where I redid the upgrade you video from Beyonce. I did the different world campaign. We did a grownish um campaign where it was like a spin off of the show. Um, we've done we homecoming, Beyonce homecoming. Like we've done several different type of campaigns, but because it was outside of the norm of what you were scrolling past, it made you stop. And so because it made you stop, it gave me enough time for you to consume the message. And I feel like a lot of people don't understand the way that humans consume information. And that's why your marketing don't land. Because most humans consume information visually. I may be a reader or I may be like, depending on, you know, you there there's different ways that you can, but everybody consumes information visually. That's why there are commercials. There is why um, there we watch TV. Like that's why we do the, the way that we do. So I was like, if everybody consumes visually, that I need to make sure that the way that I'm giving them this information is visually appealing to make them to stop 
to if they are the reader we got something for that we got something you can read the Lena page long as winchester you know what i'm saying like you could go read on it right or if you are the strategic person we got the stats we got the data we got the testimonials but everybody needs to be able to stop and be hooked in by that visual um appealing thing if that makes sense yeah that makes perfect sense i hope y'all i hope y'all taking notes because <laughs> y'all i i try it's it is not easy to get people to understand just that basic concept of um how people consume information but more so you know like you were saying the hook like be disruptive like a lot of times as entrepreneurs or I think in general like the way that the world is we kind of have like this pack mentality so people see one thing work and they're like okay I'm gonna go try to replicate that and in marketing that's not that's not the move you know what I'm saying honestly honestly what I tell people is camp I didn't do anything new I just put my own sauce on it right like I have been seeing campaigns for years in the e-commerce brand like in the e-commerce space you know mm -hmm. and when we think about it those are the people that's producing campaigns like you think about the Mia Rays or the Mean Lees or like those were the people that was producing these disruptive campaigns that make you stop and I was like, why no coach is doing it? So sometimes we look in the copy and paste from our neighbors instead of going to the next neighborhood over or going to the, the another city and see what's going on in a whole nother industry. Something may be working for something may be working for um somebody else, but it doesn't have to be in your industry. Like if you are in the beauty, why are we only looking at beauty? Go look at what's working in tech. Go look at what's working somewhere in a software. Like, how did they do a launch? Like, I just study business, period. I, I don't care if McDonald's do it. And it work, I'm going to apply it. So just study the business. Yes, that's and this is a perfect segue. You just give me all the segues, right? Because, <laughs> because I, I really want to make sure we get to this, which is the art of business, or I like to say being a student of the game. And I think a lot of people want to be their own boss, but there is literally levels to being a business owner. And it's, mm -hmm. and there's a way to do business, right? Um, So when it comes to some of the key things that you, that you feel are important with building a business, when it comes to, you know, systems or even, you know, your schedule, how you run the business, um, what you're feeding your mind and your spirit, all of those things are important. What's your regimen? Like, how, how do you get down with running your business? What are some key things that you think people should know? Yes. Or, or, or common misconceptions, you know? Well, common misconceptions, I was watching uh, something, uh, I think on social media the other day, like people feel like everybody needs a morning routine. Um, you need to spend 20, 100 hours on your morning routine and your night routine. Like, I'm not that girl. I am such, like, I'm organizing business, but my personal life be chaotic. Like, and I feel like I probably won't ever have both, right? But there is no morning routine for me. Like there is no like get up, make your bed. Like if you make your bed, that means that's the first thing you completed for the day. No, my bed is not made up right now. But my partner, he make up the bed sometimes. You know what I'm saying? But for me, it was like how I ran internally in a business. Um, And I also feel like before I tell you this, there is different seasons for different things. Mm -hmm. There was a season of the business where I was head down, straight working at the computer nonstop to from sun up to sundown not doing anything but working and I literally had to tell my partner like I'm gonna be a bad girlfriend right now because I need to be in this business you know there was a season of that now I'm not in that season anymore I have hired and all the things but um for me my routine is really like organizing my day because I have a team I have to be the leader you know and I have to guide the instruction so like today mm -hmm. I spent two hours on the phone with my project manager showing her how to lead the project and breaking it down not I could just go in there and do it like I could be like okay I did it like here you go but no I had to teach her and so 
I had to learn how to be the coach, not only to my um my students, but also to my team members so we can win this championship. They keep hearing me say like, next year we win in the championship. You know, I need some championship players, but I got to be a good coach. Mm-hmm. It don't matter if I got LeBron on the team. I don't matter if I got LeBron, if I got D-Wade, if I got all the best players on a team, it doesn't matter if you don't have a good coach. And so I have to be a good coach. And so that is where I am now. And so for me to be a good coach, I have to organize my day. I have to have time blocks. I have to use my Google calendar religiously. Um, and I have to take off time. Like before we had this, I was a little late <laughs> to this. And but I was outside, I was just girl, leaving. don't be telling on yourself. It's okay. <laughs> but no, this is this is no, I'm just saying, like. I was outside on the balcony reading the Bible and I was eating my hot wings and I was in the, in the space, you know, but because before I can leave the team for the rest of the day, I mentally need to be in the right space. And so it's okay for me to take an hour in the middle of the day to do that. It's okay for me to stop my day and go take a walk. It's okay for me to go to the gym. Like now you get to this space and I think, People start their businesses wanting to run their business like this. Like, oh, I want the freedom to be able to have the luxury. No, 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 girl. You got to work hard first. Then you can get to the level where one o'clock lunch break, you know, like one I didn't o'clock have nap. Lunch break. Right, naps. What's it called? Naps when I was broke? Like, <laughs> you know, so. No, I'm still going to take a nap different. if I'm broke. <laughs> like, I'm going there's to sleep. There's yeah. <laughs> But oh my gosh, it's so many things. I keep saying it's so many things that you said, <laughs> but it's like you preach a girl. Um, so the first thing, and I and I like to reiterate because it's stuff that's important, y'all. So when I say it's levels to entrepreneurship, when you are first starting out, I think one of the biggest mistakes, and I've made this mistake, is that I didn't build my first business in a way where it could run itself. Or I could bring on other people um, to to run it, right? To to help run it. And so I think as an entrepreneur, um, if you don't walk away with anything else, when you're a solo entrepreneur, like Monray is saying, you have to have your head down. You have to be working, right? But that does not mean that you are building the business to to be on your back right so you have to put thing you have to put systems in place and when we say systems that's just a simple word I mean a a complicated word of saying you know you have to put steps in place processes in place that um, I like to say repeatable processes so whatever it is that's making you money that's where you start with you you put something in place that if you went if you got sick for a week You could give somebody the steps to that process and your business would still keep going, right? So that's something important that I feel like a lot of entrepreneurs don't understand. So like you were saying, you don't just wake up and say, you know, I got this freedom, this financial freedom, or I have more time. You have to build your business in a way to support that, right? Um, And then it was something else that you said that, uh, oh, being in the right mind space to lead. So um, a lot of entrepreneurs, they're just solo entrepreneurs, right? Or or they are aspiring. They got a hobby. They might be making money, not profitable. But if you, we talking to people who really want to take things to the next level and actually run a profitable business. And in order to do that, you have to prepare yourself to lead. You have to prepare yourself to teach. And the only way to do that is to really get to know your business really well and to get help from coaches, mentors, um, and whether that's a Mun Ray or somebody that you got to look at on YouTube, but the, the, the result that you should be focused on is building a business that you can lead and then hand off for other people to actually keep it going. Right. So Let's talk about, um, oh, it was one thing that you mentioned earlier when you were talking about like launching, right? Um, And you said that y'all launched twice a month, right? (laughs) So um, with the launching, what's the most important thing other than like having that hook? Is there 
anything that entrepreneurs miss when it comes to launching a product, specifically like eBooks, um, digital products, right? A lot of people just put all of that stuff out, but it's not a value. And so one thing that you said was like, you figured out, okay, what is it that y'all need? How mm-hmm. did you, how did you figure out what people needed? Um, I started with one, I started polling the audience that I started to grow, but one thing I tell entrepreneurs is like, you need to focus on the transformation. First, you need to not like, don't make the mistake that I've made. And, and I guess I wouldn't call it a mistake, but I feel like today me is it, a mistake because of what has happened. But like I created, so I told you we did two launches a month, but every time we launched, we launched something new. And so I feel like I had to make those mistakes so I could teach people not to do that, right? And so because we're creative, we just want to create something new. Like I'm like, oh, a new ebook, oh, a new this, a new this, a new this. And I had to realize I can make a million dollars or I can make several million dollars by selling the same thing over and over again just to a different audience. And so that's where you should lean in. in. What is the biggest transformation that you want to make and how you going to take them from point A to point B? And then what is the vehicle to get you there? Like, do it need to be a program? Does it need to be a course? Is it a mastermind? Is it an ebook? Is it a uh, in-person class, like using whatever that vehicle is a VIP day, like using a vehicle to get you there, but you're not supposed to create something new. And if you're creative, that feels very foreign to you, right? Like it's like, no, but I tell people all the time that making money is boring. Like you're not supposed to, you, the fun part of making money is not in your offer. It's in how you get new people. So like I was having fun with creating the campaigns when we got to that part of the second year. But by the time we created the campaigns, we were selling the same thing over and over and over again. We just figured out a new way to reposition it into our audience and retell the story. And so that's where my creative self got to shine because because that's how I was selling. I was just selling the same thing over and over again. Did y'all hear what did y'all hear what she said? <laughs> uh, no, seriously. And, and we're gonna we gonna I got one more question. We're gonna close you out because I want to be mindful of your time. So um as a business owner, a lot of times we do we want to launch product after product or service after service. But what I like to say, and I learned this from one of my uh coaches, um, you know, one product one system, one way of getting customers for one year, right? Because we always, we like, I want to do this and I want to do that. And this not making money. So let me try this. You got, (laughs) you have to be consistent. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of times it's not, the answer isn't creating new things. It's like you said, repackaging what you already have. Yeah. All right. So let's get to the question that a lot of people want to know when it comes to you know just overall marketing um well it, it's questions that people want to know about marketing then I got one about scaling so when it comes to marketing what do you think um so when I saw you launch your campaigns I saw that you were on different plat well not different platforms but I saw you used ads like on shave room neighborhood talk or you know, whatever the different communities were. Can you speak to that just a little bit? Because a lot of times people want to pay for ads or launch campaigns, but they might not be in the right stage of, you know, their business, meaning they don't have the the product fully developed or the right product, um, or they just in the wrong step of the process. So they wasting money because, you know, they're not using a strategy. So can you speak to strategy when it comes to launching campaigns and running ads? Like what's the biggest lesson that you've learned? Well, one, the thing, the lesson that we learned was like, you have to lead with strategy. So even we have an eight step process of how to create campaigns, but our second step is the messaging, which is the concept, which is that's the hook. And then pair it with the strategy and those two go together, right? So yes, I need to hook you in, but I need to have strategy to hook you in. Like, what are you hooking into, right? And so I use my, I would say my accounting brain and I started to, what are the numbers? Like, okay, well, 
if 100 people come to my site and only 10 people check out, then how many people I need to come to my site to get 1,000 people to check out? So I just started to reverse engineer what needs to happen. Okay, well, when I get this many people to my social media page, this many people go to my website. So when this many people go to my website, this many, like I just started to reverse engineer this omni-channel strategy. And so I didn't, sometimes we like to like, with our campaigns, we like to do a little like boop, let me post on social media and then we go silent. Then boop, let me run a little ad, then we go silent. But my strategy has always been, let's get the traffic. Like, it's like a party. I want everybody to come to my party at one time. So let me get the traffic all day. I got two weeks. Let me just hit them back to back. Every day, an email. Every day, a text message. On Monday, I got the shade room going live. On Tuesday, I got neighborhood talk going live. On ball alert. Like, let me, every day, let me get in new traffic sources. And now I also can see, based on that, okay, Monday shade room went live. Let me look on my I, um let me look on my website and see how much traffic I got from that post. Okay, let me see how much money I got from that post. So did I get my money back? You know, so I can be able to see my ROI in it. And a lot of times when we run a campaign, we like to just do a little something and it's like, nah, let's throw the kitchen sink at the duration of the campaign so we can get the traffic and then we can make it happen and make the money. Like instead of let's like us trying to make a million dollars in a year, let's make it in a month. Why not? Yeah. We got the traffic to do it. Yeah. You dropped so many gems that I think it's just, you know, it's difficult to try to get get people to understand a lot of these concepts. Or maybe it's not difficult, but you got to start from the basics. So basically what you're saying is you have to get the traffic first, mm -hmm. right? And the other thing is like data. And I'm going to stand on my my I don't know stand on the the pew about this but you really have to focus on data as an entrepreneur because a lot of times we just doing stuff and there is no strategy right okay so uh final question what do you think was your biggest lesson when it comes to scaling from a six figure let's say zero to six figures six figures to seven figures um my biggest lesson from zero to six was six figures ain't no, no, enough money um because I didn't even realize that I had made six figures and then at the end of the year when I was looking at my stuff like to pull for my taxes I'm like we made six figures and I was like who been stealing my money because I'm still broke like I don't understand mm -hmm. where my money's going so I learned that going from six when I learned going from six to seven, ironically, the same thing, like this is not enough money, you know? And so a lot of times we're looking at somebody listening, a million dollars is not enough money. No, a million dollars is only a hundred thousand dollars, 10 times, you know? And so when you start to scale your business, you scale your expenses you scale your visibility you scale your time like everything is like being scaled too like mm -hmm. you don't have the same if i had the same expenses that i had at six figures at seven figures i'd be baby i'd be rich you know but a lot of times you have to learn a lesson of like what it takes to run a six-figure business is not the same thing it took it to run a seven and because i had never seen somebody run a seven-figure business i started doing trial and error so it's like okay well i don't have time so let me pay for these funnels let me pay for this let me okay everybody said i need to hire a team so i hired a team and now i got 30 people in the office and now my payroll is hundred and fifty thousand dollars a month and i'm like this is crazy, you know? And so you start making mistakes and then you realize like, oh, these mistakes, I get to make them because, you know, I'm the CEO, but these mistakes are not free. You know, like I have to pay for these mistakes. And so um, that would be the biggest lesson we made over, I would say five to $6 million in the last few years since we transitioned in 2020. But we may, I had to pay mistakes. I had to pay for my own lesson. I had to pay for my own education of somebody because nobody said that. Even if you have a coach, like they're not going to be able to tell you everything, right? right. Like you just going to have to go through some trial and error on your own and you just going to pay for the mistakes. And so you just got to be ready for that. And you know what? And I think that's totally fine as entrepreneurs. Um, I'd say let's, let's make the mistakes and pay for the mistakes earlier on before they get more expensive. So 
that's what it's all about is just constantly you know progressing and moving forward all right so this was such a good conversation i'm like i know we gotta uh, be mindful of time so if there is one last thing that you could leave with these creative women and aspiring entrepreneurs um what would it be yeah i would say um figure out like really tap into what your your own purpose is like what you're supposed to be doing in this journey and don't leave especially if you're coming back from corporate or whatever your experience of your past life is don't leave that behind everything that I'm learning today or everything that I'm going through today I can literally trace it back to when I was 14 working in my auntie beauty shop you know the work ethic that she was teaching me then so like just because you coming out of corporate or just because you are starting this business from scratch, this life is not from scratch, right? So take those same experiences and bring them into this business because if you are divinely on your journey, God has already set up these seeds in your life to prepare you for this moment. So this is nothing new. Um, You just on a new journey. I know that's right. And, you know, I'm not going to add anything to that because I think you said it so eloquently. So is there uh, anything that you want to share with the audience that you have coming up? Um, Any new products, any programs? What you got going on? Yes, yes, yes. I would say I would love everybody to stay tapped in to um, we have a podcast called the Ghetto CEO podcast where we talk about the highs and the lows of entrepreneurship so y'all make sure y'all check that out and then we have a live event called the ghetto ceo live where we will be bringing some of my entrepreneur friends and our community out we call our community the co-workers because as entrepreneurs we don't have co-workers so we are each other's co-workers um no, and- we ain't got no co-workers exactly and you know, used to have the most fun time y'all used to go to happy hour y'all used to you know those were where you found your friends and so we created our co-workers community to find your tribe in entrepreneurship and so um we're just gonna have a good weekend we're gonna go see the beyonce movie we're gonna go to brunch we got all kind of things to happen but um we are going to end it with the ghetto ceo live podcast live um in a just a celebration setting so we could just you know celebrate the highs and the lows of these this this year because it's been a little crazy you have the date for that yes it is december 15th and 16th here in atlanta georgia Okay, cool. All right. So y'all heard it from my Ray. Thank you so much for joining me. This has been a dope conversation. Um, I had a great time and see y'all later. Tanisha and my Ray signing out. Bye. Bye.